Yes, guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. I am not alone today. I've actually got friends. I've got people that want to talk Chelsea with me, about me. They want to remind me how much of a flip-flop I've been all season long about Maurizio Pochettino. I am delighted and honoured to welcome to the channel Josh Aveste. Mate, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I didn't know you had any friends, so this is this is weird. I don't I don't know what's happened here. You've paid me quite a lot of money to be on this channel, so I, you know, first of all, I appreciate that, and and obviously it's lovely to be on as well. You know. <laughs> yep, we're gunning to get the money's worth today. I'm going to try my absolute best to get as much information out of you about what we think is happening to the state of Chelsea, because the last time I saw you was actually in the flesh. We were having a lovely little steak. I'll put a clip of it up on the screen for you now in London before what was a diabolical game at home to Burnley. Sean Dyche wasn't even there on the bench, so you couldn't even have that intimidation of that grotty manager on the sidelines. We were awful. Chelsea were atrocious. And the season felt to me as though it was just going to crumble and disintegrate into nothingness. Yet all of a sudden now, we can sit here and chat to one another with smiles on our faces, with optimism in the air. Do you think that this was something that you would have foreshadowed back when we had that steak. Do you even think this was possible? To be honest with you, we had a we had a beautiful steak and it was a wonderful time and the game kind of did ruin it, to be fair. But I'll tell you one thing. The one thing that I've always said to you and one thing that I really respect you for is that you and I, we've never doubted Mauricio Pochettino once, <laughs> you know? And, and you and I, right, we were sat there eating our oh. steak and we were chatting about all of the wonderful memories that we've had of Mauricio Pochettino. You know, his time at PSG, how we brought kids through at Southampton. You know, even we were reminiscing about Espanol. Do you know what? We even talked about his Argentinian career and what a wonderful player he was for the national team as well and what a, what a illustrious career he had. And, and what I loved about you is, you know, we were sat there going and we were saying, you know, what a lovely chap he is. He makes barbecues for the team. He's bringing the team together. There were so many things that we we just really appreciated about this guy, and, and and what I what I thought, you know, after that game, and I, and I imagined you walking out of the ground, you know, beautifully returning to Stamford Bridge. I thought of you, and I thought, do you know what? I think he will have thought that Mauricio Pochettino did a pretty decent job in that Burnley game, and actually, <laughs> Burnley are quite a difficult team to play, regardless of whether they're going down or not. And and I and I really respect you for that, mate. I, I really I really thought that was a good good sort of stance from you. See, I wish I wish more people went down your avenue of showing gratitude for for the way that I have seen Pochettino this whole time. Because no one has said it so elegantly as what you've just said to me there. I'll be very honest with you, mate. The way that that whole dinner went down was nothing like Josh was saying there. It was great because I'd not met Joey before. I hadn't actually... We'd met, I think, once before, hadn't we? Before Yeah, that, I think we had. We met yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. I think that the problem with that was, like, you always get excited when you go into a game. When I've not been at Stamford Bridge this season, I've been watching and getting up at, like, 2.30 in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning... It feels like a chore, which it shouldn't do because it's watching Chelsea and this is this is just what I do. It's what I love. But it, it felt frustrating to just kind of anticipate things going wrong and not really knowing what you were going to see in a good light. And I think what, I've, what I wanted the whole season that we only got halfway through a game at Villa Park was to actually see some adaptability. I wanted to see Chelsea be malleable. I wanted to see us alter things within a game if it's not going in our favour. I wanted to see a plan B. I wanted to mm. see Pochettino being bold. And I think the Burnley game is a great example of what was not good about Chelsea's season because, look, we dominated that day. And, <laughs> look, the, these guys were, were awful this season. They've had a dreadful year. It's at Stamford Bridge, which has become a fortress again. But how was it? It, not even just the big teams, you know. If you go and get beaten 5 0 at Arsenal, who are still fighting to win the league on Sunday, potentially, probably not, though. You can lose those games 5 0, still unacceptable, but like it's Arsenal. To draw at home to Burnley the way that we did was unacceptable. And if, if we're looking at that game now, you win that one, you beat Sheffield United, and we're not talking about, wow, Chelsea have finished sixth. We're saying we finished fifth, which yeah. absolutely nobody would have said anything about. But what do you think what do you think it has been about Pochettino in the sense of yes there's been tactical changes but do you think there is an element here of the players actually 
took accountability for the fact that he was the one getting it in the neck from fans, getting it in the neck from the media, every press conference having to deal with all of these questions about his future. Do you think the players actually have always believed in his ideas, but just weren't taking it seriously? What do you think? Well, this is the thing, mate. I think amongst Chelsea managers, like let's list a few of them in which the play- the players actually really like them. I think you could probably say that Jose Mourinho was, I think, semi-liked, actually. I think he, he was a bit of a disciplinarian in some moments. Like there were always stories about JT bringing him in after an amazing game. JT was expecting a lot of praise and actually what Jose gave him was 10 reasons why he was shit. Do you know what I mean? So there, there were moments with Jose that we definitely look from the outside. We say we love this guy. Such a charming, charismatic guy. But I think the players in moments definitely didn't like him. And actually think about the record of players that he forego. I mean, he was probably one of the worst managers for getting rid of players who had amazing potential. You know, we could list them off yeah. you know, now, but I would be doing yeah, it with this so heavily done. Do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, and then you think of like Antonio Conte, like completely ruined Diego Costa, one of our best strikers that we've had in a generation, um, and, and also pissed off a lot of players and made them sort of play in a very militaristic, formulaic way, right? Something that was sort of, I don't think is long term a way to play football because people can't just, people are not machines. You need to sort of have some creative freedom and that sort of thing, right? Yeah. And, uh, and then, like, we could go on and on and on, couldn't we, about managers not necessarily getting on with the squad at Chelsea. And, and perhaps feigning likability and, and sort of approachability amongst the squad. But actually, in reality, they didn't really have that connection. And, and I tell you the one thing, and to answer your question, it's this. Mauricio Pochettino definitely has the sort of the, the sort of appreciation from the squad, doesn't he? Like the squad obviously really do like the guy. We keep hearing briefings and these briefings are not, you know, inconsequential. They're there for a reason. The, the, the players are saying, we really like this guy. We like his methods. We like the training. We respect him. And so I can completely understand why they have changed around. But uh, what I will say is this, mate, is I don't think the turnaround, and you mentioned this earlier on, the turnaround has been in the last four games or so, five games. I don't necessarily agree that the turnaround is is in that dense a period. I think that's a bit, I think that's sort of a bit boiled down, actually. I think if you look about yeah. it, look through, obviously we had some very good results against Everton. Yes, the Burnley and the Sheffield United results weren't the best, but we've had performances before that that have been decent. And again, you and I were chatting about this earlier on, you know, the record in the last 18 games, we're fourth, you know? Yeah, that is actually insane. Yeah. To think that the pressure's kind of got bigger as the season has gone on, yet in terms of like, football fans often get, we all get done for being like too too in the present and too reactionary. But I I, I actually think it, it took me by surprise when I saw that stat, because the way it's felt, because the the level of the bad results and bad performances were just so bad, like getting smashed by Wolves at Stamford Bridge, like mm-hmm. it takes a lot to to gain trust back after like a hammering and embarrassment like that. Sheffield United, the way that we did it, Burnley, we've spoken about it already. I think that's been the issue with Pochettino, at least from my side. It's when 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 I feel personally hurt, it's in a big way. Like if you yeah. lose five nil to Arsenal, mate, like. That was the worst day ever after that. Like I almost decided to go and hibernate under the bed, not even in it. I didn't do that, <laughs> but I thought about it. I was like, I just, it's, I was embarrassed. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you got all your mates who are Arsenal fans messaging you, even even fans of other clubs that weren't even involved in the game. They're like, God, you must be hating this. I'm like, I actually don't recognize my club. And I think yeah. that was that was the, the thing where at the start of the season, when Pochettino first took over, like not even the start of the season, when, when Fabrizio Romano announced it on the 14th of May, 23, what did you feel? Because for me, the feeling was, he's a Spurs manager. I don't want this guy. But like, I get he's good and we've got a young squad, but like, I didn't want him. What did you think? Way this back This is then. the thing. Yeah, this, this is the thing, mate, is... Um... I think sometimes with managerial appointments, I don't think you can win with some of these decisions, right? And I, and I think for me, I always put it into context, right? I absolutely, you know, I've been going to Stamford Bridge now for sort of 25 plus years as a season ticket holder, right? I feel the rivalry with Spurs. And in fact, actually, do you know what? I'm going to say this now. I actually don't think the rivalry with Spurs is, is half as bad as it used to be, to be honest with you. I don't find them as sort of a closer threat or actually I don't feel slighted by them in, in the same way because they don't win things. You know, you know, yeah. I feel more slighted <laughs> by the people that actually win trophies do you know what i mean like i think the yeah. the arsenal rivalry now the you know even even games against west ham have got more more on the line even united things like that right but yes look 
I absolutely didn't love having the idea of a, of a Spurs manager. But as I say, the context is this. The other options that were being interviewed also had their 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 issues. You know, Nagelsmann absolutely is not a guy that's going to be liked by the by the players. You know, I think a lot of people will see he's quite abrasive, and I think more so than the players because I think a lot of people may question me on that. You know, he's got good relationships in the past. I think the relationship that he would have had with the board would have been incredibly toxic. Mm. I don't think it would have been sustainable, and, and and I really worried about the sort of the, I suppose the sort of the unknowns with hiring a guy like that, right? And, and that really scared yeah. me. And we, we were very close with him for a very long time. And I still think he would have done an okay job. Uh, but I do think we've got the better man now. And then also like Enrique, you know, he has one objective at PSG. He doesn't accomplish it, you know, and, and again, a relatively likable guy, but... I mean, it, it, there's so many things with managers that they're complete unknowns. And the thing that I liked about Mauricio Pochettino was that you kind of knew what you were going to get, right? Yeah. You you knew he was coming in for Southampton, very good at developing young players. We've got a team of, you know, 12 year olds. We might as well bring that sort of experience in. And then, and then I think, you know, even <laughs> we laugh at the Tottenham experience, right? And a lot of people have been apologizing a bit for the Tottenham experience where they go, yeah, they had an amazing squad. Of course, they got to the Champions League final. Mate, Tottenham should be nowhere near a Champions League final. And Mauricio Pochettino got them there. Yes, he didn't win the trophy, but bloody hell, he did a he did a pretty good job. So to get uh, Spurs to a Champions League final is an achievement in itself. Like when Jose yeah. says like getting Man United to second with that squad that he had, like yeah. yes, I fully agree. Like that is basically comparable to winning a trophy with a Chelsea 0405 team. Yeah. And it's the same for Poch at Spurs. But like yeah. you mentioned about the young players thing, that was another thing. I was like, as much as I couldn't fully believe in him and I couldn't fully back him, I was holding on. Like, you know, when you got like monkey bars and like one hand slips because you got blisters, then there's one just holding like that. I was like, well, this guy is good with working with young players, isn't he? So we're going to see it. We're, we're going to see it. Uh, I don't see it. Do you know what I mean? I just it takes didn't time, George. see anything. It, it does it take time. Yeah, this and is I've the learned thing, that like, now. Yeah, we're, we're uh, as football fans, you've said it, we're fickle. And also we want immediate results. And let's be honest, at Chelsea fan, uh, as Chelsea fans, we, we expect immediate results because that's basically what the last 20 years have been. We've had a manager come in, immediately got us better. And, there, and then we've gone on amazing runs, right? And I, I, I think the, the key thing that I was sort of, sort of saying to myself to be honest with you I think all Chelsea fans were doing this at the start of the season is we're in a transition you know this was our mantra we're in a transition this year might not be as good as we expect but it's because we're going on a journey and you hope that the foundations that we're building this season set us up for a next era of of success and I think that's the hardest thing that we've got to sort of uh, acknowledge that we are on a journey. We're not anywhere near the end of the journey. And this was brilliant, actually, because I don't know if you remember this, but Petr Cech did an interview. I think I'm almost certain it was on uh, Monday Night Football, actually. So you might not have seen it. But Petr Cech mm. did an interview where he sort of said, right, this season, I expect uh, the guys to get Europa League. Next season, I reckon it will be challenging for Champions League. And then the season after that and the season after that, that's when Chelsea will be title challenges. And, and I believe that will be that. And remember, that guy's been in the club. You know, so so he knows. Yeah, he, he knew knows what to all the smells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so this is this is the thing, mate. The question I've got for you, I suppose, is when you were in that dark period of like not knowing how good Mauricio Pochettino is and really questioning him. Yeah. What was it? What were you looking at that you were unhappy with? And I suppose what has what has changed sort of since then? I think stylistically, I didn't see enough patterns of play on the pitch for the call it look as much as the squad is young and Pochettino I love the fact that he said he doesn't want to talk about how young the squad is anymore because I don't want to do that either because I want to just believe they're quality players and we've invested well because it's more enjoyable to think about football that way but I think it was the fact that I couldn't recognize things that you can you can tell when Man City like the Man City goal against Spurs the first one for example that is a quintessential Pep Guardiola Manchester City goal where they literally pass it in the net from two yards I wasn't seeing enough as as a team of those little patterns and those little plays that you can identify as like right we've we've clearly worked on that that's that's Poch is doing well done credit to him that wasn't happening enough it was either Cole Palmer was just sensational or like like where did the team go like what why mm. why do these guys not feel motivated and i i think i've i always hated 
the way that we just got rid of managers because I always, I've said this many times, but I always wanted a dynasty manager. And I think I also, I got rid of that dream. I got rid of that idea of a journey of a dynasty manager because I don't think that is, you've got to be very lucky to have that now. And like, even if you compare Klopp at Liverpool, it's still not an Arsene Wenger level of time. It's still not a Ferguson level of time. And that's what the dream was. So I think in that sense, I was just like, I, I kept wanting to tear it up and start again, regards Pochettino, because I was I had nothing to grip hold of in terms of that belief. And I think that's where I've been at as a fan. And the reason why I was so anti-Poch and wanted him gone is because I just had no belief that the, the team that we have out there were going anywhere. Mm -hmm. But then I also like, I, I kind of want to just say it now. Like I feel, I feel sorry for him. So I, by default, then I'm sorry as a fan for being so critical when you can see players come back from injury, Poch has more to work with, Poch tactically delivers when he's actually got fit squads of players to choose from. And yeah, Mate, I mate, guess I've said it now. I've apologised to the man. You you need to apologise. And do you know what? We almost need to do now is sort of just a piece to camera where you sort of just look directly at it and you sort of go, Michel Pochettino, I am so sorry for ever doubting you. You are my favourite <laughs> Chelsea manager of all time. And now I'm completely backing you. And I will never say that you should get sacks. I'll tell you what, I'll do... If we, if we beat Bournemouth and then we go on a three-game win streak at the start of next season... I'll do it. I'll even upload it as its own short and I'll even dress up nicely for it. Beautiful. As of right, right. now, as of, you, you guys remember, okay? I will do it. we got to win got this four clipped. league games in a row, okay? <laughs> this is it. Got this, four league, got, it's all you got to do. I know. All I know. you got to do. Mate, mate, i tell you right. Uh, I'll tell you what, right? Like for me, the case for Pochettino, I think was, was vast. And, and the reason... And, and look, I'm going to put my hands up now and I'm going to lay my uh, cards on the table, mate. I also said that he should be sacked. But thankfully, it was a moment of weakness after the Wolves game where I'd come back from Stamford Bridge and went straight onto the kickoff. And I'm sat there with all the, I suppose, the criticism and the pressure of dealing with what had just happened. The fan base were so toxic in the ground after that Wolves match. It was a horrendous performance. And actually, it was yeah. the double, wasn't it, where Wolves are beating his home and away. And I think yeah. that, that was a really dark moment. And I said, and I did call for his head in that moment. But I suppose the reason why I, I've actually been labelled, you know, you've had a lot of uh, stick for potentially, you know, going potch in and potch out. I've had a lot of stick for the other side, right? When when we were in those dark moments, I was trying my best to back him. And a lot of people were saying to me, you're so positive. You're overly positive. It's not fair. We're shit. We're regressing as a club. We're in 11th place. This isn't getting better. Like we need to change something. And I felt the pressure of going, wow, okay, I want to back this guy, but, you know, you know, things aren't going right. And I suppose the mitigating circumstances for me were this. I do feel that the injury crisis was unprecedented. And I think it's been unprecedented for two or three years. I don't think we've had yeah. something like this as Chelsea fans that I remember in a significant amount of time. And, and therefore, he immediately gets some slack from that, right? I think the assembly yeah. of the squads by the recruitment staff is fantastic if you're playing football manager and you and I have played football manager extensively, right? <laughs> if yes. we, you and I are going out there and we're co-managers, you know, I'll be your plucky assistant and you're out there trying to pick the, the squad. I know exactly what you're doing. You're going to Argentina and Brazil and you're trying to get the best under 19 players. I know what you're going to do, mate. It's very simple. Yeah. And, and Lauren Stewart and Paul Winstanley were doing exactly the same thing. They were going there and trying to, you know, get these wonder kids and bring them through. And actually, you and I would play them in the first team. At least those guys played some of them in the under-21 to start off with, right? Yeah. And, and, and then, you know, I think there was so much pressure and so much expectation on Mauricio Pochettino. And I also think there's also something that I, I have to say about, as I say, the patience of it. When you get young players and you have like a complete transfer revolution like we did with 20 players coming in, all of the experience going out the door, I think you have to say there's a, a period of betting in time. Like think of the best teams right now, Man City. They've had a cycle now of what, six, seven years where they've been building a squad. They've had a spine all together that know each other, that know exactly what they're going to do when they pass back to Edison. Yeah. They know exactly where Edison is going to pass it. When Rodri is making that sort of forward run and it, arriving late in the box, you know, uh, the, the other midfielders know that they need to cover him or whatever it is, right? And I think 
with Chelsea, with young players, and also a lot of people that weren't experienced in the Premier League, I, I think you need time. So for me, mate, these were all of the factors that were sort of coming into it. And this is why I was sort of looking at the context, I suppose, of the Mauricio Pochettino issue and thinking it's less of Mauricio Pochettino issue and more a board mismanagement issue and I suppose a recruitment problem. And it's funny, mate, because, uh, and this is the last thing I'll say on this, I ran a poll on my Instagram and the poll was after the Arsenal game. And it was very simple. Who do you blame? And the, the options were the board, the recruitment staff, uh, Mauricio Pochettino or the players. And I thought it would be overwhelmingly towards Mauricio Pochettino. I thought everyone would be yeah. blaming the manager. And, and that would make sense to me, right? And actually, the results were very equal across all, all, all four options. But actually, the yeah. most were on the players. So it, it just shows you that as a fan base, if you can't very clearly blame one person or one entity, then there are mitigating circumstances. There's other things to consider. And so, mate, that's my that's my case for for saying that Poch deserves more yeah. time. And I'm glad he's got it. I think regards to the poll as well, I think obviously contextually, the players put in such a bad performance at Arsenal. And obviously if that's like in the forefront of your mind come the end of that game, that's probably going to affect the answer. But I also think like when it comes to the way that I've criticised Pochettino, I'm not trying to like dig myself and grab myself out of a hole here, but I think there's, there's certain things as a football fan and you understand like the structure of your club. I understand that screaming for Bowley and Egbali's head is going to do absolutely nothing because they're not no. firing themselves. No, and they're there for I 20 also, years, mate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And then I think even like the Win Stanleys and the Stewarts, I think that they, they like working together, these guys. So I don't think even if they, which identifiably, I think you could say they've not done a great job so far. They've not shone. <sighs> Malocusto, not George. Been brilliant. Malocusto, Noni Madueke, yeah, George. There's, like we could, th- but we Noni Madueke on. again is a recent thing. He's a recent could, thing too. Yeah, we could go. So, we could go on though. There's a few players in there. Do you know what, mate? The recruitment. Cole I think Palmer. we. Almost, I think we need to apologise actually to some of the recruitment. Like I've been slagging Bloody them yeah, off just is, as much as you. Gonna, this is going to be like a coming out video at this point, <laughs> mate. <laughs> <laughs> I think we just need to put our I hands up now. I don't want to throw all my eggs out of the basket immediately. Nah, do you know I, what I mean? do. Like, I do. I, I mate, honestly, I I haven't been this positive about Chelsea in about three or four neither. years. Yeah. But then I've got one final thing that I want to discuss here. And this isn't me trying to be negative again. Trust me, I'm loving the positivity. I'm also going to say smack a like on this video and subscribe to Josh Aveste right now, by the way. Channel is linked in the description. The final point I want to make, though, is, is four wins in a row too little of an amount of time to genuinely say Chelsea are back? <sighs> Chelsea are back is so interesting, mate. Right. Uh, let me answer the. Let me answer this because it's actually five wins in a row because we beat Villa. Um, yeah, we did actually. Yeah, yeah, we did. yeah, yeah. So yeah. we beat we I'm beat Villa, that one too. Uh, and and you know VAR ruined it again as as they usually do. Um, I, I I don't think it is five games. I don't think it is five games, mate. Like I said, last eighteen games we're in fourth place. I think I think we're on such a tide now of um, of momentum. I I'm I actually this. really annoyed, mate. I'm actually really it. annoyed. The season is ending. Why? Why can't you just continue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I honestly why do not? feel now more games. Yeah. That's what we need. We need more football matches. The players need to play more. That's we what do. we need. And Enzo, right now, you do. can't go to the Copa America. Reese James, you no. can't go to the Euros. Just everyone, just sit at home, no. get on the beach, and just enjoy <laughs> yourselves. Do you know what I mean? Sack the uh, yeah. Please football. don't be injured. If we have yeah. a full squad for preseason, mate, like yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. I think. I'm not going to say anything crazy now, but I think next year we will be challenging for the top four. And then, and that's the thing, right? When you're in the top four, you might as well just like, you're not looking down, are you? That's what, no, that's what, no. that's what small clubs do like Spurs. That yeah. is the mentality of a bunch of losers. Yeah. So you're I, looking up then and you're like, I'm going to stick my neck out, George. I'm going to go. I'm go going to on. say this. I love it. I'm going to say on my channel. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say <laughs> Europa League. I'm going to say we're going to challenge and potentially get one of the cups. Let's say the FA Cup because it's better. And then I think we will be getting at least top four. I'm going to actually predict third next season. I think Liverpool oh. will drop off. Oh, finishing Mate, third, a Europa League and an FA Cup. I am. Li- I don't know what I do for that. You're but coming I do a home lot of things. Rate. You're coming home. Yeah. You're getting the season ticket. I, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Where's the Europa League final next year? I don't know where it is. Let me have a look. Europa League final. 
probably 2025. We're probably yeah. not even going to qualify for it now. Um, yeah, don't say that. It's just on Wednesday, the 25th of 21st of May, which is yeah. uh, well, which is very well, close say, to yeah, some other dates say, I've let's got. Let's say on my where own. would you want to go? Where would you where would you want it to be? Um, oh, flip Dublin would have been great this year, really, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, I'm going to say Lisbon. The weather will Ooh. be lovely. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think we'd 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 like it there, wouldn't we? That would be right, road tasty. trip. Road trip to Lisbon done. Mate, you're flying over. Yes. We're going to drive Any from London. Any necessary. You've got a year to get your budget ready because we are flying. And when Chelsea are winning every game next season, boy oh boy, we are going to fly some more. Mate, this has been a joyous conversation. I'm so happy that we can have a positive Chelsea chat and the season hasn't ended yet. We have got Bournemouth. Just give me a quick top end prediction for how this game is going to go. Maybe some goal scorers. Get 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 some wild ones out there so that I can clip it up and show everybody how your ball knowledge is. Yeah, straight yeah, after yeah, the how game. Bad is. Yeah, yeah, literally. <laughs> or try, I, I, try like ten different options and I'll cut one of them in. <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks, that I really appreciate it. Do you know what my wild one is? My wild one is that. Uh, well, I think the score, by the way, is going to be four 0 I think we're going to destroy Bournemouth because I don't think they've got a lot yeah. to play for, and I actually think we do have a lot to play for, especially with the fact of let's be honest, mate, we're going to finish in fifth. So you know, yeah. We are. Uh, yeah, we are. So we it, are. Mate, my my mad one is I reckon that Thiago Silva is going to score a penalty in this game. Wow. Wow. I, I think I, I think, think you're right. I think that we're going to get a penalty in, let's say, the 75th minute. I think it's going to we'll be, be three facing up at that towards. Point. Yeah, we're going to be facing the Matthew Harding end, and I think Cole Palmer is going to pick up the ball, and I think he's going to hand it to Thiago Silva, and I think Thiago Silva is going to slot it bottom right hand corner. He's going to wheel away. We're going to all be in tears, and Todd Bowley is actually going to prepare the contract for the extension. That is honestly the best thing I've ever heard in the year 2024 related to Chelsea. On that note, subscribe to this man. The link is in the description. Subscribe to me if for whatever reason you got this far into this video and you haven't done it yet. Smack a like and we will catch you very soon. Come on, you blues.